This T antenna coming into view extending from the lower wing surface of a World War II B-29 bomber is used by the plane's radar altimeter to accurately measure the distance from the plane to the ground. The intent of this video is to review characteristics, operation, accuracy, and benefits of the SCR-718 radar altimeter. A plane's altitude is usually determined by the air pressure differential between the static pressure, measured from these static ports, and a reference pressure value. The static ports measure the static pressure of the air flowing past these little holes. The other part of the plane's pitot-static system is the pitot tube, which will measure the stagnation pressure by collecting free stream air entering the probe's hole. These sensors provide flight information to these gauges, including indicated airspeed, rate of climb, and pressure altitude. Can't forget the 1936 Ford Ashtray. This image shows a pitot-static system on the B-29 bomber and where the data feeds the instrument gauges located at the pilot, co-pilot, bombardier, flight engineer, and navigator stations from a 1944 B-29 GenFam manual. The various types of altitude definitions are shown on this page from a 1945 Navigator's Information File. True altitude is the distance of the plane to sea level. Pressure altitude is the altitude referenced from the pitot-static system. Absolute altitude is the distance of the plane to the ground, which the radar altimeter provides. There may be instances when the crew will need to know the accurate absolute altitude, not just the altitude above sea level. One instance would be flying at low altitude or at night, as discussed in this 1953 Air Force document on night flying tactics. The SCR-718 radar altimeter was a necessity. Other uses of the radar altimeter include precision bombing, photographic mapping, or navigation over terrain, as discussed in this 1943 U.S. radar document. The SCR-718 is classified as an absolute radar pulse altimeter. The system operates at altitudes between 50 and 40,000 feet, with an accuracy of plus or minus 50 feet, plus one quarter percent. The unit weighs 40 pounds installed. The system consumes 135 watts of power and was issued in late 1943. The U.S. ordered 981 systems in 1943, 3,584 in 1944, 2,537 in 1945, as seen on this table from an Army World War II statistics procurement document. The SCR-718 is an upgraded SCR-518. This image shows the older SCR-518 components installed on a B-17. The altitude range is limited to only 20,000 feet. The excrescence drag from the external antenna equates to 10 pounds. The SCR-718 system installed on a B-24 Ferret, item 11. This page provides a description and components of the SCR-718 system from a 1945 Army Air Forces document on radio and radar equipment. The system provides the absolute altitude to the aircrew rather than altitude by barometric pressure. The system is unreliable at altitudes over 40,000 feet. The distance to the ground is found by radar. A radio energy pulse is sent down and reflected back to the plane. The time lapse between the pulse transmitted and received is used to calculate the distance. The system operates at 440 megacycles as a pulse signal. The system consists of a radio receiver transmitter, I-52 indicator, antennas, and a visor hood. The system's total weight is 34 pounds. The indicator at a navigator station. This image shows the altitude instrument reading differences between a radar altimeter and a barometric altimeter. A plane's SCR-718 system transmits an echo pulse down. The signal is reflected back to the plane's antenna and receiver transmitter for data processing. The radar altimeter gauge reads an altitude of 4,700 feet. The barometric pressure-based cockpit altimeter will read an altitude level of 9,920 feet. This image shows the radar altimeter's components and connection cables from an August 1945 Operating Instructions Handbook for the SCR-718 system, including the receiver transmitter, indicator, and antennas. This image shows the radar altimeter's antenna on the P-61 Black Widow. This page describes the operation of the system from a 1945 Army Air Force's Navigator's Information File document while on the ground. Turn the system on by rotating the rec knob clockwise half a turn. This red bulb should illuminate. Wait five minutes while the system warms up. Keep this toggle switch at the times one position. A green illuminated trace will glow on the indicator. If the trace does not appear, rotate this circle knob until visible. Rotate the rec gain knob until the pulse lobe is around a quarter inch high.
To calibrate the system, rotate the times one zero adjust knob such that the reference lobe's left line is touching the zero arrow. As the plane is climbing, the reflection pulse lobe will start to move clockwise around the circle trace, and the lobe will decrease in height as the plane's altitude increases. For greater fidelity, increase the reflection pulse lobe height by rotating the rec gain knob to increase the lobe's height back to a quarter inch. Since the scale switch is in the times one position, the indicator's gauge dial scale is read from zero to 5,000 feet, where every 1,000 foot in altitude is labeled with arrows on the circle trace. To find the plane's altitude when below 5,000 feet, read the leading edge of the reflection pulse's lobe line against the scale. In this example, the plane is at a 3,000 foot absolute altitude. As a plane climbs, the reflection pulse lobe will travel clockwise around the circle trace and will loop past the stationary reference pulse lobe at an absolute altitude of 5,000 feet. Toggle the scale switch to the times 10 position. The circle trace scale is now referenced from 0 to 50,000 feet rather than to 5,000 feet. When the scale toggle is switched from 1x to 10x, both the reference and reflection pulse indicators change in shape from a lobe to a line. The stationary reference pulse line does not move. Based on this indicator's gauge, the absolute altitude is around 22,800 feet. To get a more accurate high altitude absolute altitude reading, you will have to do a little simple math. While in the 10x scale toggle position, read the reflection pulse's altitude at the next lower 5,000 foot altitude value. This arrow is at a 20,000 foot altitude and this dot is at a 25,000 foot altitude. The reflection pulse line is between these two arrows and dots, so the next lower value equates to a 20,000 foot altitude. Next, flip the scale switch to the 1x position. You are now in the 5,000 foot circle scale. Read the reflection pulse line here. The reflection pulse lobe leading line reads 2,750 feet. Add the two values of 20,000 feet and 2,750 feet to get the plane's absolute altitude of 22,750 feet. This is a close-up view of the indicator's face. If flying over hilly terrain, multiple reflection pulse responses will show up in the circle trace. For safety, read the lowest reflection altitude lobe. Other system issues are listed on this page. Over water, a steady pulse is received, whereas over mountains, the pulse fluctuates and spreads. Practice comparing terrain and topo maps during your mission so you can estimate the terrain on overcast missions by the experience gained on reading the indicator dial's reflection pulse. The radar altimeter provides great value on bombing missions and exceptional value at altitudes above 20,000 feet, as described on this page from a 1945 AAF B-29 bomber radio suitability final report. A unit should be located in the bombardier's compartment. This image shows the location of a radar altimeter indicator in the Enola Gay. The Norton bomb site is here. Another view looking down over the radar altimeter indicator. A radar altimeter indicator installed on a Mustang used for airspeed calibration tests from a 1954 NACA test document. The system's antennas are located here. This 1954 B-17G characteristics document lists the APN-1 as a plane's radio altimeter. It functions like the SCR-718, except the altitude range is limited to 4,000 feet. The specification sheet for the Douglas Skymaster lists the radio altimeter as either the full range SCR-718 or the short range APN-1, like the one used on the B-17. In summary, the SCR-718 radar altimeter is a lightweight, accurate, and simple to operate instrument used to determine the airplane's absolute altitude. This can be useful in precision bombing, night flying, and low-level terrain following. If you found this World War II radar altimeter instrument deep dive review interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.